is cool. This is awesome. Dude. This is gonna be drop off, so it goes crazy. Just get this all centered. Get this all packed. Let's make a little trench like this. You should go get Graham and Neil. Okay. <laughs> this is Grandma's house. Hi, Josh. Where are you taking me? I'm, I'm it's working. A surprise. It's a surprise. What have you guys been doing? Don't get too Is this close, what you've been gonna doing? Be yeah. It's going to explode? Ah, I think so. You guys have been gone too long and I'm nervous. Are you ready for this, Grandma Neil? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Let her rip. Okay. The kids don't know that I really know what's going on out here. I've kept an eye on them, but I'm going along with the game. This is going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> that ain't nothing yet. We still have a grand finale. <laughs> then I'm gonna go back behind the tree. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Way to go. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Oh, that was a magnificent explosion. You think it's safe to come out now? Probably. Probably. Let's go check it out. Come on. Hey, guys, where's the rest of you? Come on, Rory. Damien? Come on. Let's look at this. You guys did such a good job. I love it. And look, it's still smoldering. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Harry Truman down there. He's all covered up, too. This was so realistic. Makes me want to go up the mountain again. Have you been up there recently? No. We ought to go, don't you think? Yeah. This was an inspiration. Well, let's go. Come on. Let's head for the bed. Maybe we should wash up first, you think? <laughs> Well, we've just come out of a movie watching the actual eruptions about St. Helens. We're in the visitor center. I wondered if you'd like to see what a real volcano really looks like, close up and personal. So, come on outside. I got something to show you. Well, there it is, kids. What do you think? That is Mount St. Helens. We're up close and personal, and in fact, if we had been standing here 27 years ago, we'd have been blown off that way. <laughs> Well, what happened was that the beautiful cone that was on top of there, this side blew out first, and then that whole cone just kind of collapsed right down into this valley. I hope you can see down there and see all of the, the ash and stuff that has filled up that whole valley, covered over Spirit Lake. Were you living here when it happened? I was. Um, I was living out uh, just out of sight of Tacoma, and I remember that morning. As I was driving to church, and I heard it on the radio, and I looked up, across Puget Sound, and I, then I could see these just massive clouds of dark, dark ash and smoke coming up. It was just an awesome thing. It, it just seemed like it filled the whole sky. You know, it was really exciting uh, because we knew it was going to erupt. We kept say, thinking it was going to any time. And my kids were little then. And uh, we used to come up, up the, up the Tootle River, and we would go up. There was a place on this mountainside where people would come and wait for it to erupt. And then it was only erupting steam and ash a little bit. And so it was like a picnic atmosphere up there. It was really a silly thing to do, but we just didn't realize what was going to happen. And when it blew, it really blew. <laughs> and I'm so grateful we weren't up there that day. Well, there's one of the wildlife back here, a chipmunk. Do you see a chipmunk down there? It's on the other side of the Yeah, you know, the plants and animals are starting to come back and in some areas more than others. But the whole chain of the Cascade Mountains is, is all volcanic activity. Very exciting, very fun, and some really ragged mountains. You've seen, you've seen a lot of those, and that's just where the explosions have happened and blown away the rock. But there is so much more to see and do up here. This log is one that was blown down when the mountain erupted. You can see it's pointing straight into the mountain and straight out. Just got blown completely over. Look in here, guys. It didn't even break off neatly. Look, it just kind of twisted and bent off. Doesn't look like they cut it with a saw. No, they sure didn't. Hey, look, 
I just blasted it over. Yeah, and there's lichens and stuff growing in here now, but that's the strength of the of the volcano was just to take trees this size and just smash them clear over. I want you guys to notice this ridge across the valley here. That's cold water ridge. Up in the very top there's an observatory, but if you look, you can see where the trees have been flattened by the blast. And then those that were kind of behind the ridge are still standing upright where the tops have blown off too. It's, a, it's an awesome sight up here, isn't it, guys? <laughs> this beautiful little area is called Cold Water Lake. And believe me, that water is cold. You can check out the boys' legs, they're turning blue. <laughs> it is cold, isn't it, Rory? <laughs> yeah. This little lake wasn't here before the eruption. It formed after the eruption, and, so, and the bottom of the valley got dammed up with all the mud and silt. And then the rainwater started to gather here and made this beautiful little lake. Before the mountain erupted, there was another lake, though, called Spirit Lake, just over the way a piece. It was a beautiful resort area. That's where Harry Truman lived. And I'll tell you more about Harry Truman later. But uh, it was just beautiful, heavily forested, a beautiful little lodge there. Then when the mountain blew, the whole side of the mountain went down into the valley and covered that all up. There is a tiny bit of Spirit Lake left, but it's all full of logs that look like toothpicks all shoved to the end of the, of the pond. <laughs> the waves, when the, when the uh, eruption happened, the waves that went up the side of that valley were 800 feet high. And that is just unimaginable. It, uh, that would have been something to see that wall of water coming at you. But it created another beautiful little spot, and I'm glad we're here to enjoy this one. <laughs> there are some more spots on around the lake I'd like to show you if you want to come. Come on, Cora Rory, let's go. Let's take a look around the lake a bit. See, right up in there, you can see the volcano. Look. Yeah. We I mean, were yeah. just up there on the other side of that ridge. It's starting to steam more than it is. we saw it. Yeah. Oh, look at it. Isn't it pretty? had fun. Yeah, yeah, we had a blast. Oh, good one day. Yeah, I do know what you mean. <laughs> well, it's time for us to head for home, but it's been a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for coming with me. Thank you. Ah, uh, give me a hug. Oh, head for the van. All right. For you guys at home, I'm not going anywhere. You could take this time now to write down my address, get a paper and pencil, and I'll be right back. Hey kids, Grandma Joyce would love to hear from you, so why not sit down and write her a letter? Like every grandma, she loves to get pictures, drawings, or anything else you send her. Just write to Grandma's House, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Her email is grandma at 3abn.org. That's grandma at 3abn.org. So what are you waiting for? Write her today. Now I want to tell you the story about a man named Harry Truman. Remember him from earlier in the program? He's the guy who lived right up close to Mount St. Helens at Spirit Lake just before the mountain erupted. Harry lived at a lodge there and he took care of the place even though he was 83 years old and he was kind of stoved up. <laughs> but in spite of all that, he was what some people might call a bit of a crusty old codger. That meant he still had some pretty strong opinions of his own, and he didn't mind sharing them with everybody around. He had a beard of short, stubbly whiskers that made you just want to itch to look at them, and the words he used weren't always very polite. <laughs> People today would say he wasn't politically correct. <laughs> well, here's his picture. What do you think? Anyhow, when the earthquakes around the mountain began, and people started thinking that maybe it was going to start erupting again, Reporters would go up to the area every few days to show on TV what was happening. Sometimes they'd stop and they'd talk to Harry at the lodge. They'd have a bit of lunch with him and he'd tell them that all this fuss over a dormant volcano was just plain silly and a waste of time. Well, the signs of a coming eruption were happening oftener every day, with the earthquakes getting stronger and sometimes little plume of steam or ash would pump out. 
But Harry said everybody was over-exaggerating, and he paid no attention to the warnings for people to get ready to evacuate. One day, the sheriff and his deputies came to the little valley and told everyone it was time to go. It was just too dangerous for them to stay where they were. And though the people were not happy about leaving their homes behind, all of them left, except Harry. Harry refused to believe the mountain would hurt him. The sheriff tried one last time to warn him and begged him to get out of the way. But Harry just snorted, hmm. If the mountain goes, I go with it. I ain't, it ain't going to hurt me, boy. And he showed the sheriff the door. Later that evening, Harry fed the 16 cats he owned, and he turned into bed for a night of quiet slumber. Everything was peaceful as he slept. But early the next morning, before he was even out of bed, an earthquake rumbled. The mountain exploded, and tons of rock and earth slid down the mountainside. It raced across Spirit Lake and slammed right into the lodge where Harry lived. The water and the debris made a wall that went some 800 feet up the sides of the hills around his home, and it buried the lodge under 150 feet of ashes and mud, and that's a fact. Now, here's the thing. I didn't tell you this story to make you sad, but to help you think. Lots of you who watch this little program are going to be bebopping down the road and don't even know about another earth-shattering event that's just around the corner for all of us. I'm scared for you because I love you, and I know that while some kids are blessed to know about Jesus in the Bible, lots of other folks haven't been as lucky. So it's them I especially want to hear me now. Jesus is coming very soon, and that's fantastic news for everybody who loves him. But if you don't know him and why he's coming back, you might be tempted to just brush the idea aside and not pay any attention. You might think people have been saying that for a long time now and think that it's just not real. Kind of like what Harry Truman thought about his mountain and the volcano. Oh, if you've never heard about Jesus, I want to reach right through this screen and put my arms around you, draw you really close and tell you everything I know about him. I want to tell you everything all at once, so you'll love him too. And this program is just too short to do that. But here's the most important thing. Jesus is God, and he loves you. Jesus created you with his very own two hands and gave you a life he meant for you to keep forever. Our arch enemy tricked us into sin, which means that now we can't live forever. People get old and sick, and they die. You know that, don't you? But Jesus has a way to give you back your forever life if you follow him and the instructions he gives. In the Bible, the friends of Jesus wrote down what he said. And some of it was for how we could tell when he was ready to come and take us to heaven. He told us signs to watch for. And he said they would get bigger and stronger and closer together the nearer we got to his return. Those very signs are happening today. Earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, wars everywhere and they are getting stronger and closer together every single day. And now for the very best part. This means that Jesus is waiting for you just around the corner. He's waiting because he loves you so much he just can't bear to think you might not be ready yet and he's giving you a little more time to decide. Please decide. Be saved today. Bye till the next time. I love you. Well, Mount St. Helens blew, but we sounded like this. Boys and girls, don't try this at home. Okay, this experiment uh, seemed proved rather successful. As you can see, there's uh, no more volcano left. Kids, do not try this at home. I think I plugged my ears.